So over the past few months then, we've been following the amazing challenge of a man from Burslem who's cycling 2,000 miles around the country. Chris Park, nicknamed the Man in Notion. Man in Notion. Very good. Has ridden the equivalent of the whole of the Tour de France or the distance from Stoke-on-Trent to Moscow in just under 50 days. He used the entire National Cycle Path Network, but did it while raising money for the Mind Charity. You may have seen this video scrolling on your social media channels. Mental health can affect anyone at any time. And one of the main causes are the feelings of loneliness and becoming isolated from your friends, family or a community. I'm Chris Parr, BBC Environmental Award winner and social entrepreneur from Burslem in Stoke-on-Trent, North Staffordshire. The world capital of the pottery industry and home to the Man in Notion Challenge. Having worked in the public sector for over 25 years, I now plan to reach other resilient communities across Great Britain using the National Cycle Network. In March 2023, I'll be completing a physical and mental health challenge for Mind Charity, cycling 2,000 miles across England, Wales and Scotland, encouraging people to become more active and helping others to get creative. That is the voice of Chris Parr. And he joins me live on BBC Radio Stoke this morning. Morning, Chris. How are you? Good morning. Not too bad. Not too bad. 2,000 miles in 50 days. It's a fair old trek, that, isn't it? It is. I'm still trying to process what I've actually achieved here this summer. So, yeah, it was a huge distance using the, the National Cycle Network. But, uh, yeah, it was something that broke down into little achievable goals and then eventually got to uh, St. Hostel uh, in Devon. And, yeah, that was the 2,000-mile uh, target. How are you feeling? Um, I've been back for about about several weeks now, so I've got back to some sort of normality. But uh, yeah, it's taken me a while to to do that. Uh, I think the biggest challenge was um, I'm still I'm still sort of eating as I was actually doing the challenge, so I'm just getting back to eating uh, normally. But uh, yeah, getting back to that uh, that that place, and uh, yeah, I think my sleep sleep patterns have been affected a little bit, but. Like I said, I'm just getting back to some sort of normality. You're eating like you're still doing the challenge. Talk me through it. Come on. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the biggest uh, realizations of what that challenge was. I, I was just eating for for two. If, if anything, it was yeah, I was cycling up to about 84 miles a day on some occasions. So I, I did I had to get all my calories in as, as soon as possible and just keep on top of that. So. Yeah, I, was, I found myself eating quite a lot of uh, calories and, and different foods that I wouldn't normally eat. Like, uh, yeah. come on, Chris, give me come, run through it, run through it for me. Uh, I think my go-to food was uh, shortbread. I absolutely loved it. It was pretty easy to get hold of. Whereas, obviously, things like oat cakes were, were pretty were pretty scarce on on the route. But yeah, uh, that was my go-to food if I was uh, feeling a, a bit peckish and that's uh, shortbread. I love how you say it. it's easy to get all of, like it's some kind of illicit um, substance. Yeah, shortbread. You can get as much as you like for shortbread, no problem at all. Yeah. Keeps you going. Uh, can you remind us why you wanted to do it in the first place then? Yeah, that, it was to inspire others to get involved in some sort of physical or creative activity. Um, I was inspired by a group that I've worked with in Stoke on Trent called Port Vale's Golden Valiance Programme. Uh, they come together during uh, lockdown, where a lot of the the staff, uh, the players, and the owners um, did a lot of garden gate visits to to vulnerable members of the the, the community and the fan base. Uh, and that kept going after lockdown. They got together. Uh, I think they started uh, with a group of about uh, a dozen. Uh, and now it's after two years still going. And it's thriving. They've got about about 150 members now all meeting up on a Thursday morning and a Thursday afternoon. Uh, just getting together, socialising, reminiscing, sharing stories of their, their troubles. And uh, they're getting involved in things, activities such as uh, daily bingo sessions, quizzes, uh, walking football, indoor uh, bowls, but also going on uh, like trips to, I think they went to Landuno the other day. So it was just being inspired by those people getting together. Uh, and even though they're going through a few problems mentally and physically, they still get together and do those activities. So I thought, you know, if I could do something similar by, you know, my challenge was to cycle uh, across Great Britain in 50 days, uh, suffering from my own loneliness and uh, mental health issues during that trip 
then people could get over whatever challenges they are facing as well. So I think that's where the, the idea came from. What do they all think of what you were doing? They think I was mad. <laughs> Absolutely mad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they were proud of me. So I'll obviously see them a bit later on today. Um, but yeah, they, uh, I've been inspired by them and they just keep going. They just keep uh, yeah getting involved in those activities and that obviously helps with your, your mental health and uh, wellness. You also set up the Run uh, and Run the Stoke 2000. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I do a, a recycling project that celebrates Stoke-on-Trent's industrial heritage. So that's been running for about uh, five years or so now. Uh, last year, I won a BBC Radio Stoke Environmental Award for what I do, and I recycle pallets that are donated to the project by local businesses. And we make uh, bottle kiln or bottle oven-shaped planters or another relatable items to celebrate the city's pottery industry uh, but it's all to do with recycling and working with people because that creative activity also helps with your, your mental health as well so yeah certainly a recycling activity but it, it celebrates the city's uh, heritage at the same time. Chris I don't know how to ask this without sounding not very professional but when you cycle 2,000 miles um, do you ache in places you didn't know you could ache and have sores in places you didn't know you could get sores? <coughs> Yeah, some people told me about that, but I did uh, some really, really good research and I found this cushion seat and that was one of my uh, comfort things, just to have a, a padded seat because, uh, yeah, I wouldn't uh, be as sore as uh, I would if I had a, a normal seat. So I did invest in that and it was one of the best things I ever bought because it wasn't built for speed, but it was certainly built for comfort and <laughs> it, was, uh, it sort of got me through that challenge. Love it. Chris, thank you very much for coming on. Okay, thank you. Take care. That is the voice of Chris Parr, nicknamed the man in notion. He's ridden the equivalent of the whole of Tour de France or the distance between Stoke-on-Trent to Moscow in just 50 days to try and raise money for charity.